Hey, in this video, I want to take you through my process of scanning real world objects, bringing those into three dimensions in the computer and adding those to characters inside of Unreal Engine using Character Creator. First step is going to be to take a bunch of photos around your object from all different angles, then bring those photos into Reality Capture. Just drag into the input area and go up to align images click that it's going to go through a series of uh, thinking process and align images if you don't see anything here there's over to the left there are multiple components that get made when you um, when you do this you can see there's this is kind of like an empty click on the other component there with the more cameras uh, camera views attached to it and now you can see that you've got um, a model there so now we're going to go to uh, we're going to set the ground plane rotate this just so it's a little bit more um, in line with what we want here it doesn't have to be perfect we're going to adjust all that later and we'll do uh, set reconstruction region and bring in some of these sides and stuff so we're not cutting through the model but getting kind of close to it all right now that we got that set up We'll go to um, normal detail and click this. It's going to run through the reconstruction process. Obviously not that fast, but it will uh, reconstruct everything. Now you can see the boot here. It's got some little pop marks and stuff in it, but um, we'll clean all that up in another program. I'll show you in just a little bit. But basically it is um, there. So I'm going to run the high detail and um, go through that process so a little bit more detail with the stitching and things like that but not noticeably um, a huge difference either way so I just like to see whether we get a big jump in quality if you go to the high resolution versus the normal um, obviously if you're going to be exporting this as a um, as a model to clean up and use on characters I would kind of not do it with the preview um, mode normal or high would be your best bet all right so let's go to smoothing tool and see if we can smooth out some of this stuff here we'll go to uh, smooth it's going to run back through that process smoothed out some of the um, some of the stuff there but I don't know it's always questionable to me whether it's worth doing that or not um, you can also simplify your model if, you, if the polygon count is too high. We'll go to the simplify tool and you can type in a target um, polygon number. One million is usually pretty good. Uh, so we'll do simplify. See we're at 13. Does that say thir yeah, 13 million. So we'll do, we'll run this and say yes goes through the simplification process and creates a new model uh, with a lot less uh, triangle. Now we'll, we'll texture that. You can't, if you do texture before you simplify, you're going to have to retexture your model because it, it messes up all the uh, textures. But once you add those textures, you can see that you get a lot of detail. Um, it just really cleans up the model. All those little bumps and crevices and things just kind of go away when you, uh, when you do that you can see there's a little bit of cleanup we have to do on the back of this model and then obviously the zipper at the top needs um, quite a bit of cleanup and the hill area of the boot and underneath the boot so our next step will be to export this model got a model we'll pick a place to save it and you uh, go ahead and get your license to export it out export as an OBJ and um, that'll go through that process. Always save this file. Once you've licensed it, you are licensing basically the images that you use to make the model. So um, you can go back and recreate that model again if you need to without having to pay for additional exports of it. So we'll go to Mesh Mixer, and this is a free program you can download, and we'll import in our model here. All right, so we got this. I found that this program is one of the best for cleaning up um, areas of your 
of your model once you've scanned it all. It just seems to work really well with um, very high dense meshes and uh, being able to clean those up really fast. So I'm going to go through, clean this model up and um, just erase the stuff that we don't want. And then once I've done that, I'm going to actually um, solidify the model inside of Mesh Mixer here. And we'll export this as a, a lower poly version of the model. Um, and we'll end up applying the textures from the high poly onto this low poly model. So I'm just gonna clean this up now and get back to you once this is done. All right, we've cleaned up the model, so now I'm going to solidify it. And you can see there's all kinds of um, bumps and blemishes and all kinds of stuff. Don't worry about the texture too much because we're going to obviously reapply that in um, another program. But if we go in and just kind of smooth out this mesh, it's going to work a lot better for, um, for our future use on these models. So I'm going to go through and smooth out all the bumps and crevices and just clean, just in general, clean this model up so we can apply our texture to it. We got our clean model here, so we're gonna export this and we're gonna bring this into Blender. And first, we're gonna import OBJ and we're gonna find the two million poly count model. So this is the high resolution model. Now we don't wanna change the position of this model because the position of the new lower poly model is gonna come in in the exact same location as this model. So we just kinda of keep it where it is even though it's in a weird angle and everything. So we'll do file import and we'll bring in the lower poly model that we've cleaned up the mesh on here. and there's not gonna be any texture applied to this model itself. So we've got the LP, low poly model, and the 2M, the two million triangle count model from Reality Capture. So now the key is to get the materials from one onto the other. So I'm gonna duplicate this by holding Shift D, drag it out, and then just press Escape and it'll pop back into its original location. We'll name that Cage because we're going to bake this inside a cage and do tab go into the cage model and do alt s and that'll scale the model by the normals and you basically want it to overlap the entire high resolution model so you can see we've got some busting out there so i'm going to redo that go in there edit and uh control or alt s sorry and scale that up just until it overlaps that little element there. Okay, so we've got our cage around this object. Now I'm going to go to um, the high poly model here and go into rendering, change the render engine to cycles. And I'm going to use a plugin called uh, Simple Bake. I believe is the name of the program. Yeah, Simple Bake. I'm going to bake the diffuse. First, I'm gonna run a test on it just to make sure we get the right output. I'm gonna bake selected object to a target. The target is gonna be the low poly, and then the cage is gonna be called the cage. So we're gonna run this. We'll do export bakes because you wanna make sure you save your image. Blender doesn't actually save the image for you. Um, and we'll call this uh, test. And then I like to copy the object and apply the bake and we'll run that bake on that. And you can see it doesn't really give you much feedback while you're doing it, but you'll open up your folder. You've got the blender file saved too, and it'll start creating a new, um, a new image. Now this is a test low resolution image, obviously. So what we want to do, if it looks appropriate, you can turn everything off and look at your, your newly created model, that looks fine to me. So we'll delete this and we're gonna redo it at a higher resolution. 
basically the same thing, do 4K this time, and just check we're doing everything, and then go to the bottom and rename this. And I usually just name it the resolution because it adds the model name to it anyway. Go over here, you're going to see eventually the image will pop up. And there we are. And you can see there's a lot higher resolution image. So I'm just going to go turn all these off and look at our boot here. And you can see we've got a lot of detail in there. It has a little bit of a glossy look to it. So I'm going to go to the shader and just turn the roughness down a bit. Um, or up, sorry, up a bit. So it's a little bit more rougher texture. You could you could go in and change all those um, the roughness and everything inside of uh, inside of um, Substance Painter and really adjust it. So that's what we want to do here with all this bottom um, elements from the scan. I just want to go into Substance Painter and clean all that up. So I'm going to go File and save this and then we want to do file export FBX and I'm gonna I usually call this like four substance or something like that selected objects only mesh and do export alright so we'll close this we'll open up substance painter I'm gonna delete that other test file there and we've got our FBX so we'll open up substance painter here all right we'll do a new project and change it to 4k 4k do select find that FBX we exported from blender I'm going to add the image texture that we baked onto that. So hopefully it'll bring that in at the same time. All right, so we go to our project. You can see our image right there. So I'm going to drag that into the base color of the fill layer that we created. Now we've applied that to our model here. So we want to go in and clean up all of this on the base of the model. So a quick way to do this is to add a new paint layer and then change it from normal to pass through and it's going to pass through the information from above into this. So we'll use our rubber stamp tool and press V to select the area and then just start clicking and dragging to paint that area that it's copying over. So each time press V and just uh, go in and start cleaning all this up here. Now it's the bottom of the boot so you don't have to be too um, particular on how it all comes together. You just want it to, in this case, you just want it to um, look fairly natural. It's going to, if you happen to see it when you, a character raises their foot or something like that, but most likely you won't notice this at all. Although you would notice these white, um, this white material. I usually create a, I have a um, sheet of paper where I draw random lines and things like that. And I've noticed that when I do that, when I put an object on, on top of an image, with that texture, with that random um, black on white texture. Reality Capture does a lot better on marrying up the views of that object than if I just were to set the object on top of a box um, or something without a pattern. That pattern just really helps um, align the pixels properly. So that's why I end up having to 
clean this strange pattern out. It may be worth it to, um, to actually put something underneath the object that was the same color as the boot um, base and then outside of that immediate vicinity you could have this uh, textured image. That way there'd be ho hopefully maybe a little bit less cleanup of all this stuff. So because this does this takes probably the most amount of time is spent just cleaning all this stuff up. All right, so we got the bottom. So now we're going to do some of the top. There was some holes in the model we had to fill. So I'm just going to fix some of that stuff. Fix some of this strange uh, waviness in the material here. Just clean it up a bit. I don't want to go overboard. I just want to uh, just get it looking a little bit better. So I'm going to do a black layer here and fill it inside this part that's going to be in the leg. Um, the model is actually solid, so it doesn't have all that uh, excess polygons going down into the model because you wouldn't see them anyway. So I just uh, did like a solid cap top on it. We'll paint it black and it'll just uh, disappear into the character's leg, obviously. If you needed boots to be sitting in the corner of a room and uh, you could depress that just a little bit, push it down in, in Blender and, and have those um, have that model go down a little bit just so it gives some depth to the top of, of that, but probably not that necessary. I'll just clean a little bit of this up. All right, in general, looking looking like a boot we can apply to a character. So we're gonna do export textures and I'm gonna change the location of this. I usually put it in my substance folder here. And I'm gonna change it to I change it to Sketchfab preset and make sure it's 4K and then we'll do export. It's going to run through this. I usually don't upload it right now. I just do cancel. But it, what it does is it creates all the files um, for you. So it makes it easier for later. Creates, puts it in a little zip file so I can extract this. And there we have our um, model DAE file and all the associated textures with it. Okay, so we're gonna go back into Blender. We'll do import the DAE that we just created out of Substance. and it's going to be huge. It's big, so we take it and we're going to just uh, apply the materials really quickly here. So if you have Node Wrangler, you can actually hold, press this principle and hold Control Shift T, which is just something you need to enable inside of Blender plugins. Uh, it's called Node Wrangler, and we'll find these four materials to apply, and it just automatically sets everything up for you. The other way is you just drag each one in and connect it up. So we'll just rotate this, start, uh, get it into a good position where your character would be. All right, now we're gonna we're gonna open uh, Character Creator three, and we'll export a character from. We'll use this girl here. We'll put her in the um, a standard pose that you can replicate easily. So we'll go to T, the T pose here, and we'll do File, 
export OBJ with um, current pose. And we don't need the materials or anything, so we'll say OK. And we'll put this somewhere, and then we'll do file import and bring in this character we just exported. This is all just for alignment reasons. So we've got our person here. So now we can actually scale our boot down and fit it around her feet. So once you get it all positioned and scaled, um, there's probably going to have to be some tweaks you're going to have to do to get it to fit right. So you can go into the mesh and just kind of um, move the mesh around to fit the foot. Um, just go into the edit and just start kind of stretching it. There's a, um, a feature in Blender where you can like kind of select objects and it kind of, um, it'll, it'll grow the selection, I guess, like a smooth selection around it. So you can, you see that circle going around it. You can uh, smooth that out so that it's not a sharp, um, change when you when you stretch out the boot it's like a smooth kind of deal so I'm going to select all this and do G to grab and then I'll change my selection circle and just kind of grow it I, do, I like to do it in small stages because just go different directions see how you can manipulate that mesh without trying to go all in one direction just go up and down, left and right, just to kind of feel the boot around the foot. And I'm locking the X and Y axis usually. I don't try to like grab it and just move it randomly around. I will uh, try to do that. So All right, so I've got most of this. I'm just going to fix this around her calf. You can see as I grow that selection, smooth selection, it really smooths out the, um, the way the model moves. like this exterior clothing and so I can focus on her her leg here you can also scale and use the uh, selection tool to um, smooth scale things A lot of this is just fitting around your character. It takes a lot of time. All right, so once you got that, you want to apply those transform um, settings. And then what we'll do is we'll duplicate the object. So we'll mirror along the, um, the x-axis. And it's just going to pop it right on the other, other foot there. So now we have two um, boots on our character. So we will take both of these and bring them into character creator now so what you want to do is select um, I'm just going to rename this one delete out the person here and I'm going to delete out this old stuff so now we've got basically just our good meshes here select them both I'm going to do object apply all transform just to make sure we've reset all the scales and locations and stuff of both the objects and we're going to save this
I like to purge out all the extra data from my model here so it's clean when I'm saving it. I know I've got the like bare bones kind of stuff just to save space on the hard drive. Okay, so now finally we're going to export. If they look good to you, go ahead and um, select them and join them together. Do Control J, join them together to make one object. Our boots here. All right, now we got these. We're going to do File, Save again, and then File, Export. File, export, FBX, and we're just going to choose selected objects, mesh, and export. Okay, so now we're back in Character Creator. We're going to make sure we're back in our original T pose. And we're going to do create accessory. Now we're going to find our boots that we made here, our FBX boots. And they never come in at the right scale. Um, so we have to scale those. So we we'll go to modify, lock the X and Y and Z, and we'll do one. So we'll bring them down in scale. You never know whether they come in big or small, but it's, it seems to be totally random. So we'll select them and go to materials. And you can see we're missing some materials here. So. We're going to just drag in all the different materials. Make sure you change your um, material type to PBR. That way you'll see all these options here. And bring that in as a normal. And we've already got the base color. All right, so we've got our boots on our character. Now, if you were to move your character, she would jump out of her boots. So we need to actually transform the skin weights of your character to the accessory object. So to transfer skin weights. And it brings this up. You can choose shoes and say apply. So now those weights have been assigned to your character. So if we go to a different view, you can see that obviously we've got some coordination with the dress going on, but um, the boots are now aligning to her position and her skin and working pretty well actually. Yeah, so that's the that's the process of scanning real world objects, bringing them into uh, first uh, reality capture photographs, creating the model, then bringing that into mesh mixer and smoothing out, cleaning up the model, bring it to Blender basically mapping the textures from the scan onto the low poly model that you cleaned up and then bring that into Substance Painter and um, ultimately back into Blender to align to your character and then bring it back into Character Creator. So a lot of steps involved, but uh, totally worth it way to create materials and um, objects that work with your character. And you can use over and over again once you've got it in your accessory library. As you can see, I've added it to a series of um, boots and stuff. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it valuable and uh, look forward to the next video.